Hi, I'm Bill Vestal. I'm here to tell you all about the art of crystal sticks twirling batons. Today what we're going to do is cover the basics about how to get through the skin of crystal sticks, how to get into the action itself, learn the basic motions, learn the expanding aerobics uh, part of the sticks activity, and then finally get into the art or the dance and the display of what you can do with the sticks as an active kind of a thing. It's a fun way to explore your own self, your own ability to learn, your own ability to persist at something and have a great deal of fun at the same time. The history of sticks essentially goes back generations upon generations upon generations and what we found out is that most cultures have one form of sticks play or another. The American Cherokee Indians for example would uh, have a baton and put arrowheads on the ends. On this one I'm using a leather piece to absorb the shock and a little rubberized grip to facilitate the play. The nice thing about sticks is that the activity starts to grow almost immediately from when you first get into it and you'll start finding yourself right in the midst of your own artistic self-expression through movement uh, and concentrated activity. Over the course of the time that I've been doing sticks now in this last six and a half years, I found out that if you will do a little bit of sticks each day, then what starts to happen uh, as you do sticks each day is that you rely upon the foundation that you built from the day before. So when you start with those basic motions, the tossbacks and the tick-tocks that we're going to get into right now, then you'll find out that it's your beginning persistence that will pay off the most in the long run. The thing that I had to get up front is that everybody drops the sticks. And if you drop the sticks, then of course what's going to happen is you've got to give yourself that little extra edge to pick them up and keep right on going. My name is Alon Seven Thunders. My name is Nixie. Uh, my name is Michael Feeney. My name is Jonathan Everett, aka Alien John. I have been playing sticks for over 13 years now. That's the first of many object manipulation props I got started with. I've been playing for a couple of years now. I've been playing sticks on and off now for about nine years. I've been doing sticks for 13 years. I also spin poi and staff and double staff and I spear play and Diablo and I recently started juggling and it all started with this. So there's a special place in my heart for crystal sticks. It's one of the more dynamic props that I perform with and play with. You want me to start out from the beginning for someone who wants to get going from the beginning? The easiest way to start um, playing the sticks is drop the stick like that. So I like to start with sticks with that baton down on the ground so I can pay attention to my hand sticks because depending on how you control and hold your hand sticks you're gonna have a better relationship with your baton. You don't want to just hold on like this like a club your wrist is gonna wobble around too much you won't have a lot of control. What you want to do is choke up a little bit so that you can brace this part of the stick against your, the butt of your hand, against your wrist. Point with your pointer finger so you have more leverage, so it's aligned with the bones in your arm. So that way my whole forearm and the stick are working together as one, not torquing my wrist, I'm using the arm muscles which are a lot stronger. You're gonna make sure that you're choking up a little bit on your hand sticks, point your index fingers out. So you're going to use your whole arm instead of just your wrist, you're going to keep your wrist straight. So you'll notice as I play, if you pay close attention to what my arms are doing, I, I move more from my arms and shoulders than just batting my wrist around, and that gives me a lot more control. Once you're getting used to that handhold, sometimes I like to warm people up with just some tossing and catching to get, get the feel of the stick. This is just kind of a warm-up exercise. You can toss it with a little flip by pushing a little harder with one hand stick, get used to that. I also like to get people hooked into the end there. This is kind of like spinning the stick on training wheels. You drop one end down and flip it around to start to get used to how it feels for that stick to flip. Once again, this is kind of more of a warm-up exercise because we're not really moving in real time yet. We're not really moving at the speed of the stick with gravity like you would with a tick-tock or other moves. So you get comfortable with the stick flipping, tossing, catching, but that's all kind of, you're always pausing in between. What you really want to do is get good at the tick-tock. You're going to pinch the very top of the baton, lift it up, put the bottom back down. And what this does is it stops movements. A lot of times people will pick up the baton, it'll swing and, and it'll be out of control. So this stops all unnecessary movement. We're going to pretend it's a windshield wiper. We're going to go all the way down. We're going to kind of give it this little pop. When you catch it, you want to kind of give with it. So taking the weight off of it, you kind of want to stall it out, catch it horizontal every time. A windshield wiper doesn't work very good if it's only doing this, and neither will your, your crystal stick. 
You want to flip it all the way over, all the way back, so that it's almost flat each time that you catch it. Nice cushioned landing. It's not about hitting. It's about a nice smooth catch, so you have control. Then you start lifting that end up. Because these are counterweighted, it's naturally going to hop up off the ground, catch it again. You start using your sense of balance each time you catch, and you never actually have to let it hit the ground again, and you're doing the tick-tock. From the ground, all you're going to do is that same motion and just kind of stand up with it. And as you're doing this, we're lifting straight up into the air to toss it. You're dropping straight down to catch it. Your catch is much more important than your toss. It's all of your control. Pick it up like that. And then take one stick out and then you do the tick tock. Or another way, you could just set it down like that and start out, pick it up. And then like a big pair of chopsticks or tweezers, you get right underneath the leather head of the baton pull it up and stand the baton on the ground. And then once you've got that, pick it up and drop one hand out and balance the baton on one stick. Line up the hand that has the other hand stick on it. Kind of keep a nice level parallel lines going. And then you concentrate on a point about four inches from the top of the head of the baton. You toss it over and toss it back, trying to hit the same point. Tip it over and back. You want to try and stay about one and a half to two inches from the top. The closer to the top you get, the faster it plays, the closer to the center, the slower it's going to play, which adds a little bit more balance, which is a little bit trickier. Now, some people who play with traditional devil sticks are hitting that around and it's kind of getting out of control. It's really about finesse. It's about using balance, catching that end, stalling it out almost flat each time. Every time I catch it, do you see how close to flat it gets? And this is called the tick-tock. This is step number one in working the sticks. The important thing about the tick-tock is that it's teaching you how to toss and catch. You're tossing and catching over and over again. You're getting equally comfortable with your left and right hand. Everything else you end up doing in a subtle way is still going to involve tossing and catching. If you're comfortable tossing and catching, you can keep it going indefinitely. One thing about the sticks, when you're tossing the tick-tock, you want to have soft knees, kind of swing your hips with the movement, and it's always best to stick to music. From the tick-tock, there's a few different ways you can flip it that, as you get used to, will open up all sorts of possibilities. The tick-tock's really just flipping half a turn back and forth. So you can always try flipping it a, a full turn, like so. Flip. You could flip it a turn and a half. Notice how that's always spinning inward. Since my body's a mirror image, spinning in towards my center line here, that's spinning inward. It's really easy to spin inward and then toss it over to catch with the other hand. And that happens very naturally as an extension of catching above the middle like you would for a tick-tock. If you want to spin it outward, you catch below the middle. It'll do a rollover like so. And if you get comfortable with that, you can keep it spinning outward. So there's only a couple basic things that you want to do with your flips at first. Spinning it outward, spinning it inward seeing how those combine. You can also, instead of flipping back and forth between two hands, you can also flip it back and forth with just one hand. So I'm flipping from the inner edge of my hand stick to the back side. Inside, back side, inside, back side. You want to get comfortable with that with both hands. So there's, there's only really a couple different flips you can do that way until you start to do a helicopter. From the tick-tock, you can start to move your elbows. If you want to move in a clockwise motion in, uh, the way you're standing, you push out with your left as you t start to throw and catch in with your right. So toss out with your left, in with your right. This is called the helicopter or the flat spin, the two-handed flat spin. So from a tick-tock, I'm catching on one side and carrying that end in a little bit. And I catch on the other side, push the other end out. 
those two opposing forces, just like you tossing up and gravity pulling down, in this case, you pushing out and on the other side pulling in, are causing the stick to start to rotate around. We call that the push and pull, or the helicopter. Now, to do this one, start out like that. See? And then you go around and around until you pick it up, and then you got that. And from here, you can go into the one-handed spin. Now, I also teach the one-handed spin from off the ground. You get down on one knee. You take your dominant hand and come in about three or four inches from the end, kind of soften your knees. And then in um, a minute, in the count of three, push up and as you push, you uh, want to pick it up and do a circle in the air with the stick. You start to turn in a counterclockwise position. And you go one, two, three. And that's how you do the spin. One, two, Getting into it and giving it your all, the rewards will just keep accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. Up to this point, what we've been doing is spending a lot of time just getting into the skin of sticks, just trying to get into that part of these opening beginning moves. But the real fun actually takes off from that point forward. Let's do a little bit of sticks here. And what I want to do is show you something slightly beyond that skin of sticks or those opening moves. As you can see me doing right now, I'm doing these tick-tock and the flip-flop as you were seeing in the video that we've been looking at, and a tug and push, of course, creates that wobble. So again, these are the basic moves. So now watch. I'm going to spread my feet a little bit. I'm going to bend those knees. I'm going to turn, going as low as I can go, and I'm going to play using those longer muscles. Now, as you'll see, that, that stretch uh, can be spread all the way around the body. I call it claim your bubble. <laughs> the idea around this has to do with spreading those moves out all around the body, getting a whole active area or field then of play. And then, of course, taking that play and tying it up with some music and some fun and some dance and really getting into the dynamics of sticks. Claim your bubble. The nice thing about claiming your bubble is once you get involved in that stretch, your lower body starts to really loosen up. It's also a very good workout, low impact workout. Because this is basically just a rotating TikTok, anything that we did just a moment ago from the TikTok, you can start doing from the helicopter. So I can flip it over while doing a helicopter. 
I can roll it over while doing a helicopter. And if I got good at that one-handed tick-tock, or flip-flop since it's flipping all the way over, you can start pushing and pulling that too to get a one-handed figure eight spin going. As you get comfortable with that, that'll eventually turn into an infinity roll where you're constantly in contact, constantly in control of where the stick is going, spinning it around in a figure eight. I like this move. I don't know if this is the actual infinity, and I'm good at it with my right hand, not so good with my left. It's, it's where you kind of keep the baton, to try to keep the baton going and going. And then if you slow down the infinity, you can actually get it to float. And then the outside double infinity. Going into the inside. It's gonna wind out, stop, and go back in the other direction. And that, that's definitely something that's important to do that I really like to get people doing, playing in both directions. Using both hands, both sides of the body. If you can spin in one direction, make sure you spin in the other. If I had really known to practice that when I first got started, I would have gotten into a lot of the crazier stuff a lot sooner. I still feel far more comfortable going in one direction than I do the other. But I've been working on changing that. And I've seen some people who have started more recently that specifically practice in both directions that have a lot of versatility and fluidity and feel very comfortable moving in whatever direction they want. And that means you have more freedom of expression to use while playing with your sticks. I've invented this one, the tick-tock under the leg. You do that and that. Yep. And I also invented doing it with your eyes closed like this. And you can also do it under the leg like that. And I've also invented um, this, um, with crystal sticks at least. Oops, watch this, round backwards. Behind the back, and I can also close my eyes while I do that. Well, my favorite one happens to be the simple hand stick toss. I really just like playing with those. Get them going on both ends. Yeah, that one's actually really, I call that, I don't even know, defying gravity. <laughs> Into the Coriolis effect right there. Um, somebody showed me this one though. Yeah. Oh. It teaches you how to use your left and right brain. So it kind of makes the real serious, meticulous person a little softer, more artistic, and vice versa. And another one of the best things about playing sticks is that you can have a good time playing around with them. Oh no! Um, don't get frustrated, don't give up. It all comes. Take a deep breath, relax, enjoy it. Well, I do dance very well, so even though I'm not the best sticker, I can fake it because I, I look good. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of different things you can play with the crystal sticks. Of course, I just like to show off sometimes. I think I can get this one. Yep, and this.
how you do the crystal stick. 